All right, guys, happy Wednesday. Let's have some fun. Arr, matey. Probably wondering why I'm saying that. Well, not all heroes wear capes, but the person that I encountered on a college campus last night was indeed wearing one. He also was sporting a hook, like a pirate, and he dressed like an LGBTQ-friendly pirate. Here, here's a pic. Yep, we're going to talk about that because, ladies and gentlemen, I visit college campuses so that you don't have to. Speaking of which, if looks could kill, in case you missed it, Doritos, yes, the nacho chip company, for whatever reason, they hired this pronoun person to be their brand ambassador. And then shockingly, truly shockingly, this person turned out to be a freak, and so they had to fire it immediately. Yeah, crazy story. Plus, later on, you guys, the impossible has happened. Nikki Haley has dropped out of the presidential race after Donald Trump swept Super Tuesday. I don't know about you guys, but personally, I'm feeling a little sad. I'm, I'm going to miss Nikki Haley. All that and more today coming up on Candace Owens. All right, guys, as many of you know, I visit college campuses. It's something that I've always done. I love it. Every semester, I go out there. And I like it because it helps me keep my finger on the pulse of America, to hear the grave concerns of the world's most privileged human beings who have ever walked the face of the planet. That, yep, is my favorite pastime. And last year, of course, you will recall, I learned that these visits don't exactly mesh well with late-term pregnancy. My patients... It was just pretty much non-existent when I was eight months pregnant and I was in New York. Here, I'll jog your memory. Hello. What do you have to say to the trans students on this campus who actively feel victimized by your presence here today? Life's tough. Get a helmet, man. I'm too pregnant for this. Next question. I really did feel that way, and as much as the internet loved that, it is, of course, a scientific fact. When you are eight months pregnant, women with children can relate. (laughs) You just, you have no time for that. You have no time for that. I was indeed too pregnant, but I wasn't proud. This went viral. I said, no, 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 I can be more compassionate. I promised myself that if I encountered a circumstance like this again, and I wasn't pregnant, and I'm not pregnant right now, that I would be much more compassionate and much more understanding of these individuals' grave concerns. And so last night, I went to the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. And honestly, I just wanna be clear, it was great. One of the best campuses, and when I say best, I mean the most normal campuses that I have ever visited. Usually people are insane, depending on where you are, they become more insane. If you're in California, forget it. Duck, hide, if you're in New York, kind of the same. But as you go towards the South, the kids just get, they're just more normal. But my friends, As they say, there really is at least one in every crowd. And things were going swimmingly. I really thought we're going to just end this evening and things are going to be great until this person stepped up to the plate. And I want you to at first just take a look at this student who walked up. Just take a look at him. We're going to freeze the frame here, go through it in case you're listening on audio. A lot happening here. It's giving Jack Sparrow. It is is giving Captain Hook. I wasn't sure. And I want to be clear, you guys, tons of buttons on the hat there. And you can see that the top of the Captain hat is a trans flag. So I want to be clear. I, I This is happening very quickly. I don't know who's going to be the next person to step up. And I'm going to ask you, because you're thinking, Candice, what did you do? What would you do if this person approached you? What would you do if this person grabbed the mic? Obviously, I immediately had a a fight or flight adrenaline response. I was like, I'm gonna fight this person? No, he's armed with a weapon of sorts. It's a hook from Amazon. And then I just thought to myself, here's what I should do. I should just think of what they tell you to do in a hostage circumstance. Try to humanize yourself. Try to relate with the person. Talk to the person and tell them that you've got kids and maybe they'll be nice to you. And I... That's exactly what I did. Take a listen. Oh my gosh, I literally love this outfit because, no, it's okay. I was just saying I love your outfit because literally my son right now loves Peter Pan and I just bought him the hook. So this is incredible. I love that. (laughs) Just, that's what I did. I was like, let me just going to be really nice and tell him why I love this outfit. This is totally normal that you're dressed like a pirate on a college campus. And my three-year-old son loves pirates. Can we be friends? Please don't kill me. Please do not behead me. I don't even know if you can behead someone with a hook. I couldn't think through the science that quick. But anyways, let me tell you guys, this pirate was not budging. He was no friend of mine. Peter Pan was in his sights and he wanted war. 
And he obviously had researched my entire life very deeply. I mean, at the very least, he spent five minutes on my Wikipedia page. And he came ready to embarrass me. Listen to what he asked. Go ahead. All right, all right so uh, can you maybe hear me? Pardon? Right, can you maybe hear me? Yeah. All right, so uh, my question for you was, so uh, I believe in high school you had a racial discrimination lawsuit yeah. and you received $50,000 from your school as a mm -hmm. result of this. And you've recently claimed that like racism isn't like such a big deal. So mm -hmm. are you interested in perhaps giving that money back or like what's the mm -hmm. plan there? Ooh, sick burn. How was I ever going to recover from this? I've seen people say this on the internet. Oh my gosh, Candace, surprise. We know about what happened to you in high school. Well, I'll tell you how I recovered from it. It turns out I actually also know what happened to me in high school. And of course, this was not at all embarrassing to me. So here's what I said in response. So you're not educated about my life, and I'm very happy to educate you. And by the way, the best way to get educated about my life is to purchase my book where I talked about this in chapter two. <laughs> I do, I do just want to tell you that, because it's like remarkable to me that I wrote about this extensively in my book, and people always think this is a gotcha. They're like, gotcha, this happened to you in high school. Yeah, it's actually the reason I am conservative, is because of this thing that happened to me in high school, um, which was a race in incident that involved a kid that was my best friend, and he, you know, I got a boyfriend, that's the truth, and stopped hanging out with all my friends, as high school girls do, totally innocent, normal situation. And one night, he obviously had too much to drink and some and got three people who I had never heard of or met um, to leave really horrific racist messages. Now, I've never once said that racism doesn't exist. That's uh, something that was created by the root and people keep saying I've said it. Actually, I say the exact opposite. Racism will always exist as long as human beings exist as human beings are ignorant, right? And that's when you meet somebody that's actually racist, they're just ignorant. They're, it's, it's the people that I'm like, I could never even be offended by you being a racist because I'm going to be so far ahead of you in life. It's ridiculous, right? But going back to the story, um, this kid used to be my friend. He was upset that I stopped hanging out with him. And unfortunately, one of the people that left these messages happened to be the governor of Connecticut's son. So this turned overnight into a political sensational story. It's my first introduction to the media, my first introduction to the NAACP, who showed up at the front of my school, had never talked to me, but tried to raise money off of real hurt that I was going through. Nobody tried to sit down and actually resolve the situation. Was the kid a racist? Well, obviously not, because we were best friends for years, right? Was he hurt? Yes. Did he say racist things? Yes. That situation, and by the way, the money refund that you're talking about was because I, while this was a huge news cameras outside event, um, homeschooled. I had to stay home and homeschool and get private tutoring while this was going on until the FBI could trace these phone calls. So um, if you're stepping to the plate to tell me that that's not right, that you know you got reimbursed for being out of school, um, you're making not a very valid point, I don't think. But the moral of what my lesson was was that people are raising money. What I learned from it was people are literally raising money off of racism. The NAACP never wants racism to go away. Okay, they want because they can fund on finding it everywhere, and they didn't care about the fact when I was a young teenager. I learned a lesson about the media. It's all about selling headlines and selling your story and your point of view. And nobody looked at me or those boys, for matter. One of them was 12 and was being called a racist, and it impacted the rest of that kid's life. Like I mean, these kids were suicidal on drugs, plenty of arrests after it, because that's how traumatic it was to have adults rush and instead of adulting, labeling kids for the rest of their lives without trying to get to the root of the situation. So I appreciate the Captain Hook heroic attempt to catch me at my own game, R. but I am very proud of what I went through in high school and I thank God for it because it woke me up to a lot of the things that we're facing today in our society. And thank you so much for your question. Can we get one R, matey? Okay. R. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I also like to point to the fact I just realized that he's also holding a skeleton in his other hand. So he's got one hook and he's holding a skeleton. Uh, and I'm actually so happy that I'm showing you guys that today because the amount of people that bring up that high school situation as a gotcha moment, 
when, as I said, it is in my book and I am so grateful to have gone through it is really ridiculous. What I refer to that as, by the way, is headline syndrome, right? People read headlines about individuals. They're convinced that whatever headline the headline tells them is real. I've never once said racism doesn't exist. And then they try to present it to you as if they're educated. And really the moral of what I said to these uh, students in my speech is don't become victims of headlines. Actually conduct your own research. Don't believe that you're being told the whole story in your classrooms even. Don't believe your teachers and their narratives narratives, conduct your own research, you're probably going to learn more in the real world when you begin to do that. Miraculously, you guys, despite that exchange, this, this pirate wasn't done with me. I think he was probably feeling the burn because he thought that that was going to be it. So he randomly asked if he could ask me just one more question. I said yes, because I am a good per person. And I didn't think that what he asked was going to be too crazy. But yes, he wanted to embarrass me just one more time. And here's what he Asked. Take a listen. Can I ask a follow-up question? Uh, sure, go, go for it. All right, matey. Is your hair real or is it a weave? It is real. All of my hair is real. Thank you. <laughs> Sometimes the internet wants to know. You just got to answer the questions. Yep. He asked me if my hair was a weave. <laughs> I just... I don't know what goes on on these college campuses, but ladies and gentlemen, maybe inquiring minds do want to know. So let me tell you, this is my real hair. It is not a weave, and that's all I'm going to say about that. We are in the midst of Lent, the 40 days leading up to Easter. Many Christians are choosing to give up alcohol, social media, and other distractions to focus more on prayer, fasting, and giving. Hallow's annual Pray 40 Challenge is one of their most popular. Last year, over 1 million people joined. This year's Pray 40 Challenge focuses on surrender and includes meditations on the powerful book, He Leadeth Me. This is a story about a priest who became a prisoner and a slave in the Soviet Union during the Cold War. His story is one of ultimate surrender, and we are called to offer up our worries, anxieties, problems, and lives to God. There will also be Lent music, Lent-specific Bible stories, and other Lenten prayers, like the Seven Last Words of Christ with Jim Caviezel. Hallow is truly transformative and will help you connect with your faith on a deeper level. So what are you waiting for? Join Hallow's Pray 40 Challenge today. Download the Hallow app at hallow.com slash Candice. That's hallow.com slash Candice for an exclusive three-month free trial of all 6,000 plus prayers and meditations. Okay, now it's time for some topics du jour. But before we get into that first topic, you already know what I'm going to say. We are on the race to 3 million subs. So take some time to subscribe right now. A lot going on with uh, Doritos. I used to love those chips when I was a kid. Well, Doritos is making some bad decisions out there. I'll just tell you the story. So there is a pronoun person. The real name of this individual is Ivan Gonzalez Renido, okay? But Ivan also has an alter ego, a stage name, and that alter ego goes by Samantha Hudson. So he's got that going on, 24 years old. And I want to say this is a pronoun person with a purpose, in interviews, Hudson identified as anti-capitalist and Marxist, also claiming in one video to be, quote, for the abolition of, you guessed it, and the destruction of and wants to annihilate the traditional monogamous nuclear family. Totally normal. I've got different personalities, and also I want to annihilate the nuclear family. None of that rang as problematic for Doritos because corporations love that. They're like, mm, I, I love a problem. I'm going to ignore every red flag. And what I'm going to do is offer you an opportunity. Unbelievably, Hudson received a partnership with Doritos Spain because I guess no one else was available or we are just kind of treading in that direction. If it feels dark and it feels wrong, corporations are like, let's go with that. So I'm going to show you uh, a clip this is a Doritos Spain clip, just to be clear. So Hudson is speaking in Spanish, but I just want you to see in case you are listening, I mean, in case you are watching this and not listening, uh, what they decided to create together, Doritos Spain and Hudson, and release onto Instagram. Take a listen. Ser perfecta no es fácil, pero te acabas acostumbrando. No soy nada de eso, o sea, te si falta. Perfecta. No, no soy Eres perfecta. perfecta. Soy súper orgullosa de mí, de ser totalmente quien yo soy y no oprimirme por nada del mundo. Ya, 
Yeah, so this is kind of what they're selling to kids. Now, did that make you want to eat a Dorito, by the way? Even if we didn't get to the scandalous part, did you watch that commercial and go, yes, I'm so glad this is the brand ambassador. Got to stop right now off the highway at a Texaco and grab me some Doritos. I didn't feel that way, but maybe you did. So I'm just going to allow you to experience that however you experienced it. So what ended up happening, and I'm shocked, absolutely shocked, is that this pronoun person who wants to annihilate the nuclear family uh, didn't really have a very nice history. The internet thought this person looks weird. I'm going to go through and see what this individual has tweeted. And it turns out that in 2015, that pronoun person tweeted some questionable things. I will read you. This is the English translation of what Hudson tweeted in 2015. Hudson wrote, quote, I want to do thuggish things to get into a 12-year-old girl's beep. Oh, okay. Another one translates to, quote, in the middle of the street in Mallorca in panties and screaming that I'm a nymphomaniac in front of a super beautiful eight-year-old girl. Oh, okay. Okay, Hudson. Okay, great. What do you got else? What else do you have for us? Hudson also wrote, quote, I hate women who are victims of sexual assault and go to self-help centers to overcome their trauma. Annoying sluts. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I don't know. What do you want me to say? Okay, he, that, that, I mean, I'm sorry, pronoun person really does hate that. So if you have been sexually assaulted, please don't be an annoying slut to this person who's totally normal totally obviously has no issues underlying, which is why Doritos gave uh, Hudson a partnership. Let, let's make this person more famous. So obviously once these tweets resurfaced, uh, Hudson immediately apologized saying that, you, I just wrote this as pure provocation and it is in very bad taste now that I'm making all this money. Please don't take this sponsorship away from me. Who cares if I said these awful things? And basically was trying to say this was all a nonsense and, and now realizes that the dark humor was, was not funny at all. Yeah, yo, it definitely wasn't funny. Kind of felt a little bit mm, pedophilia light, which is what I've been talking about a lot as of late. If you're paying attention to what's going on in society, they're just kind of trying to get us there, a little friendly nudge. And we are not budging. And so Doritos, you're not going to believe us. They fired this trans activist just two days after establishing that individual as the brand ambassador. After being alerted, they said, uh, we can't believe this. We're so sorry. We want to distance ourselves. No, Doritos. It doesn't actually work like this. First and foremost, I have questions. Why would you hire this individual in the first place? Even if you didn't have a tweet, what was your intention hiring this individual? Because this is not about acceptance. This is not about trying to widen the net of acceptance. There's something more sinister going on here. By the way, you're a pretty big corporation. So can you just make us all aware to what the system is here? An individual could just be tweeting that publicly and you establish that individual to be a brand ambassador, ambassador and nobody went through the process of trying to understand what this person thought, especially since I would say Kind of looks like to me they may be presenting with some problems. But what, what do I know? I'm so old school. I listen to my gut. And when people dress like that and look like that, I go, hmm, signals to me that that individual could be disturbed. But I would, I'm wrong. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to me. YouTube says, nope, they got a policy for that. Even if a person is throwing out the red flags, if you see them, you are the problem. So we are the problem, not Hudson. Riddle me that one, ladies and gentlemen. Balance of Nature fruits and veggies are the most convenient way to get your whole food ingredients every day. Balance of Nature uses an advanced cold vacuum process that encapsulates fruits and vegetables into whole food supplements without sacrificing their natural antioxidants. The capsules are completely void of additives, fillers, extracts, synthetics, pesticides, or added sugar. The only thing that is in Balance of Nature's fruit and veggie capsules are, well, fruits and veggies. Right now, my listeners will get 35% off their first order and a free fiber and spice supplement. Balance of Nature's Fiber and Spice Supplement is a revolutionary fiber drink with a unique blend of 12 spices and whole foods. There has never been an easier way to make sure that you're getting your daily dose of fruits and vegetables. Experience Balance of Nature for yourself today. Go to balanceofnature.com and use promo code CANDICE for 35% off your first order as a preferred customer, plus get a free bottle of Fiber and Spice. That's balanceofnature.com, promo code CANDICE for 35% off your first preferred order, plus a free bottle of Fiber and Spice. All right, moving on to some very sad news. Get your tissues out. It's very sad. 
Nikki Haley uh, has suspended her presidential campaign. And yeah, it's a lot to go through. It's a lot to process. I'm here for you. If you need to take a second, if you're driving, why don't you pull over? It's okay to cry on the side of the road. Everyone's doing it. You can trauma dump on TikTok right now. Uh, Fortunately, in her concession speech, all two of her fans were there. All two of her voters were there. Uh, But she did say that she was ceding the nomination to Trump after he pretty much destroyed her in Super Tuesday. And she had some some words of inspiration to all of us, really just kind of saying what this campaign was and what it was about in the retrospect. Take a listen to what Nikki Haley said. Our national debt will eventually crush our economy. A smaller federal government is not only necessary for our freedom, it is necessary for our survival. Oh, I'm sorry. Did she just say something about the debt? and that we need a smaller a smaller government. That seems weird. Uh, did Nikki Haley see herself on the campaign trail? Has she, because I, I didn't feel like that was someone that wanted to shrink government or shrink the debt in any capacity. Let's, let's jog our memories and jog her memory in the process. This is Nikki Haley regarding Iran, who she wanted to bomb. Take a listen. You don't play the tit for tat with Iran. What you do instead is when they do this, you go right at the heart of their infrastructure. You hit their ability to go and even hurt an American soldier. Physically. If that doesn't work with Iran, if that, yes, you take out their infrastructure. If that doesn't work, then you go after the leadership in the um, IRGC and make sure you go after the leadership in Iran. Bomb, bomb, bomb. Maybe maybe bombs are free. I don't know. And then if that doesn't work, bomb some more. And then there was, of course, the case of Ukraine when one young woman was trying to make this work. How are we going to be America first, not spend any money, but also bomb and supply funding for other countries? Here's what Nikki had to say. Please explain to us how you will put the United States first. And additionally, I'm wondering how you can continue to send money to Ukraine where they're really not accounting for how they're spending all of our billions of dollars. And just to support Ukraine, it only costs three and a half percent of our defense budget. That's it. Well, you heard, ladies and gentlemen, it's just going to cost three and a half percent of our defense budget. So, you know, approximately fifty six point seven billion dollars. That's it. That's it. We're just going to give Ukraine fifty six point seven billion dollars. What are you complaining about? You guys get to work. And by the way, it wasn't just uh, Ukraine, of course. There was more countries. It wasn't just Iran that needed to be bombed. It wasn't Ukraine that needed our money. It was also, of course, Israel. Here she is again. Take a listen. You know, the one thing I'll say is America has to get this right. The world is on fire and America has to get this right. The right thing to do is we were there for Ukraine because it's a pro-American, freedom-loving country that was invaded by a thug. And that thug has said that once he takes Ukraine, Poland and the Baltics are next. Those are NATO countries, and that's about war. We're about preventing war. So you've got Ukraine. Then you have Israel. And we see what's happening in the Middle East. We do both. If you leave Ukraine, then the next step is they're going to want to leave Israel. We already accepted defeat in Afghanistan. That was horrible the way it happened. We cannot leave Ukraine. You can do both. And we should do both. It's the right thing to do. Now, some of you guys may be confused and trying to work through what she just said, so I will explain it to you very slowly, okay? In order to prevent war, you have to go to war. And like in Afghanistan, then you have to lose the war, get out of the war, and immediately jump into funding another war between Ukraine and Russia. And if you don't do that war, then Israel can't go to war, so we have to fund that war. So the best thing to do to prevent the war is to go to war and fund the wars everywhere. That was very clear to me. And I love her. I really love her. And by the way, when we're done bombing Iran in the war, we're, we're going to bomb the head of Iran in some more war. And I don't think she was clear enough on Israel. So let's hear her again. Support Israel, whatever they need, whenever they need it, no questions asked. <laughs> Netanyahu calls and he's just like, listen, I just need all of it. I, I, the defense budget is $3 trillion and I'm going to need all trillion all, all the trillions. I just said, what, no questions asked. And, you know, what do you need? Honestly, what do you need? Do you need slaves? Because we will start exporting Americans to just build, build, and do whatever you need in Israel. No questions asked. 
And if you ask questions, then you don't really understand Nikki Haley at all because she doesn't answer those questions. She just repeats stuff. And even when it doesn't make sense, at least she looks us in the face and tries to sell it to us anyways. And there will be never, ever, ever be a better clip that came out of this election. And this is why I am going to miss her than when she described in a sensible way what can happen to you if you're on TikTok. Take a listen to Nikki Haley. We really do need to ban TikTok once and for all. And let me tell you why. For every 30 minutes that someone watches TikTok, every day, they become 17% more anti-Semitic, more pro-Hamas based on doing that. I, I'm so happy she shared that fact. Obviously, it must be true. Now, maybe you're a person and you're listening, you're like, I, I love Jewish people, I love my Jewish friends. Well, then you stay off TikTok because if you jumped on TikTok for three hours, you would go from a person who loved your Jewish friends to Adolf Hitler in a, just a couple of hours. So you heard her, ladies and gentlemen. And so the reason why I'm going to miss Nikki Haley is because this was actually the most relatable presidential campaign that we have ever seen. Nikki Haley, she was just girl mathing real hard the entire time. She didn't even understand that she was losing. She didn't know how the votes were working or tabulating or being calculated. She thought she was winning the whole time. And that, my friends, is why I love her. I'm sorry, Nikki Haley. Let's pour some out for our fallen homies. All right, guys, moving on. I thought this was a strange headline, and I've been doing some lives to this effect, but this came out of The Telegraph. Doctors admit link between transgender hormone therapy and cancer in leaked emails. And some people were surprised by this. People were sharing this. And it's just amazing to me how little people understand how big pharma works. Remove trans from this. Synthetic hormones in general are cancer-causing agents. They have always known this. And if you want to talk about synthetic hormones, you should talk about birth control. I have been doing this. We just did a whole series on a shot in the dark regarding birth control that will be releasing in the near future. And it's just incredible to me that people never read the inserts. They don't look into the history of the trials. Uh, I go over all of them, but yes, in the trials, obviously they were building a lot of these to sterilize women. This is why they wanted to create birth control. Go figure that one out. Control birth. And you have all these women today who just don't understand the history of that, uh, of what synthetic hormones were doing. And in these trials, yes, they saw that they were, these hormones were causing cancers using Depo-Provera as just one example. It caused cancer in rhesus monkeys. Then it caused cancers, cancer in dogs, right? And over and over again, they kept trying to get this approved. And the FDA was like, no, a little too much cancer for us to be comfortable. And then what happened after a couple of decades, the FDA just said, you know what, why don't we just change the rules so we can go ahead and get this approved for you? And they said, okay, if, even if it causes cancer in dogs and monkeys, as long as you can show that it doesn't cause cancer in lab mice, then we will we'll approve it. And that, my friends, is the story of Deborah Provera. I promise you, they've always known uh, in the trials that they cause cancer. And so if you are not yet subscribe to Daily Wire Plus and you're a parent, please, please, if you're thinking about having children, if you are a person and you realize that you've been on birth control for a very long time, you know nothing about it. Uh, if you are a person and you don't really know the history of vaccines or you believe that they eradicated polio, which they factually did not, they did not, they just changed the definition of polio. They changed the diagnostic definition. It was just a magic trick. Then please, 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 I implore you to watch the Shot in the Dark series. We're doing such great work there. And it's the thing that I do here that I am the most proud of. So um, I hope you guys will enjoy it. Grand Canyon University is a private Christian university in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona. GCU believes that our creator has endowed us with certain inalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. They believe in equal opportunities and that the American dream starts with purpose. GCU equips you to serve others in ways that promote human flourishing, creating a ripple effect of transformation for generations to come. So whether you're pursuing a bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree, Grand Canyon University's online, on-campus, and hybrid learning environments are designed to help you achieve your degree. GCU has over 330 academic programs as of September 2023. It will meet you where you are and provide a path to help you fulfill your unique academic, personal, and professional goals. So find your purpose today at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. That's gcu.edu. All right, guys, now it's time to read some of your comments regarding episodes past this First set of comments, these first set of comments, pardon, are regarding the rise of Christian nationalism because everybody knows 
When you walk outside of your house, you are scared if you come across a Christian. You look both ways, because what if a Christian's coming? It'd be crazy, especially if it's a Christian that loves their country. That is the main concern today, according to all of the headlines that have been running over the past month or so. Jay Archer writes, I am a Christian and love this country. Therefore, I am also a Christian nationalist. Go, Candace, keep it up. <gasps> Jay, they're going to find you. They're going to hunt you. You be quiet, sir. Teresa Gonzalez writes, I am a Christian and follow Jesus Christ and proud of it. Pray for America. Yes, please pray for America. And we do need a, a return of being proud to be Christians. Because as I said yesterday, it is so obvious to me now, like I think about my experience with atheism and why I was like, oh, so embarrassed that my grandparents were so faithful is because even that was a part of their programming. We All of our grandparents were so faithful. And then so many of us were like, no, it's not cool. God's just not cool. We were being brainwashed. We were being brainwashed against our own faith by people that I believe always had evil interests. This person writes, this is Mo Rita. As a Muslim, we are fully aware of this darkness and evil that's looming against religious beliefs, praying for all in this world to hold on to their strong faith. Um, from your mouth to God's ears, as they say. Regarding Justin Bieber and Haley, obviously something is going on there, and we know that he is you know, grew up in Hollywood, so to speak, which means that he has seen a lot of evil. And I really do believe that he is struggling with what to do. Gigi writes, I have been praying for Justin and Haley there in the lines and for sure in Hollywood. The attacks on Christians are ramping up across the world. Though we here in America haven't experienced it that much, I feel it is coming and the time may come that we will really suffer persecution. The man spoke of a power in our community of Christians. However, he has no idea that it is the strength of the Holy Spirit that makes us strong. BTW, love your beautiful dress, Candace. Keep up the fight. Thank you so much. Actually, that was a shirt that I wore yesterday, the gold one. And yes, I know some people were saying, you know, Candace, Haley is not super Christian. Somebody pointed out, and I wasn't aware of this in yesterday's episode, that she was a part of a pro-choice campaign. And so that wouldn't make her a true Christian. Here's what I want to say. She may not have all the tools, but I do think that any individual that is in Hollywood that is making an effort to be involved with her church, as she does, um, and to involve her husband in that church and to show up every day to hear the word, we should not push them away, right? That's not how we are going to come together as Christians. More clarity becomes provided the deeper you get into your faith. I went from atheism, I went from being faithful as a child to an atheist in my young adulthood and was brought back to faith because I was, you know, involved in a non-denominational church. And now I am so, I, I'm going to be Orthodox Russian by tomorrow, okay? So let's meet people where they are at and not dismiss them. I, I think they are calling out for help and they, they need to know that we're there for them even though I do agree that she has it wrong on the pro-choice campaign. But I used to be pro-choice, so I'm, I'm happy to talk to her. We are here for them. This person writes, Candace, I was born in a non-Christian family, and I love listening to straight-talking people who are based and have conviction. You opened my eyes to Trump not being a racist, and I also love your unapologetic Christianity. I found that I'm drawn to people seeking and speaking truth for the sake of truth, and many of these people are. I thank you for your comment and for your compliment, and I hope that by just talking about Christianity unapologetically, that we stop thinking as we were programmed to think, but it's a weird thing. Like obviously, our society was better when people were faithful. Obviously, our society was better when kids were praying in the classroom and when kids were, even if you're just learning about the Bible theologically, I mean, you can major in theology in college. Why not just teach it? I would, I would be totally okay and open with that. And maybe what we need are strong Christian groups to lobby for that in the same way that there were a bunch of Jewish groups that were strong that lobbied to remove prayer from the classroom back in the 1960s. So yeah, I'm always making a call for more faith, not less. It is what we need, what the world needs now. Last set of comments here. This is regarding the great Daily Wire debates regarding kids in bars. I came for Matt Walsh yesterday hard. I stole his lunch money because I said no kids, no place for kids at bars. This person writes, totally agree with Candace on the baby in a bar situation. Before my son was born, I would see women out and about with newborn babies in busy shopping malls, coffee shops, and restaurants, and always felt bad for the tiny little human. 
When my son was born, every health service tried to encourage me to get out of the house and mingle as soon as possible for mental health, etc. But I felt exactly the same as before. My son was born, and the tiny little human needed comfort, security, and peace with his mom. And to be completely honest, I didn't feel like going shopping simply because I couldn't stop staring at my child. And five years later, I still can't. Yes, I mean, I'm glad you're sharing that. Everybody has a different experience. I know there are some people that like to get right back on the horse and get into their acti- activities and incorporate their child into their life. There's no problem with that. I had no problem with that personally. And it does feel good to sometimes get outside of the house for the first time. Otherwise, you you can kind of feel like it's all madness and you're very tired. But I totally am against kids at bars, babies at bars. And I just didn't agree with anybody in that situation. Just to be clear, I thought the woman was inappropriate for screaming, get your effing kid out of the bar. She was drunk and didn't. it was not a good look at all. But I also think maybe get your baby out of the bar. Does it make sense that the same company that controls half of online retail also eavesdrops on your private conversations at home? Or what about the idea that a single company controls 90% of internet searches, runs your email service, and gets to track everything that you do on your smartphone? Big tech is more powerful than most countries and profits by exploiting your personal data. It's time to put a layer of protection between big tech and your online activity. That's why I use ExpressVPN. Think about how much of your life is on the internet. Every site you visit, video you watch, or message you send gets tracked and data mined. But when you run ExpressVPN on your device, their software hides your IP address. This is something that big tech can use to personally identify you. ExpressVPN makes your activity harder to trace and sell to advertisers. What I like most about ExpressVPN is how easy it is to use. You just download the app on your phone or computer, you tap one button, and then you're protected. So stop handing your personal data over to big tech monopoly that mines your activity and sells your information. Protect yourself with the VPN that I trust to keep me safe online. Visit expressvpn.com slash Candice. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash Candice to get three extra months free. All right, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, that is all the time that we have for today. I hope that I have made you happy on this hump day. Tonight, I'm actually going to North Carolina We'll see what I find on a college campus. No matter what, I will be here tomorrow for a brand new episode.